Today we have this gorgeous looking integral here that's going to evaluate to an aesthetically pleasing result with a really cool solution development. It's the integral from 0 to 2 pi of x dx divided by phi minus the squared cosine of x, where phi is of course the golden ratio. So I'd like to start off the solution development using a transformation from the x realm to the 2 pi minus x realm. So that gives us the integral from now 2 pi to 0 of 2 pi minus x. And the differential element, of course, becomes negative dx. So we have this negative sign here, dx divided by phi minus the cosine of 2 pi minus x squared. And immediately we notice that we can switch up the limits here. We can switch up 2 pi and 0 to get rid of the negative sign. So we have the integral now again from 0 to 2 pi of 2 pi minus x dx divided by phi minus the cosine function is 2 pi periodic anyway. So we're still left with the squared cosine of x. And now I can make use of the linearity of the integration operator and write this as an integral from 0 to 2 pi dx divided by phi minus the squared cosine of x and this constant multiple of 2 pi is written outside minus the integral from 0 to 2 pi of x dx divided by phi minus cosine squared x, which we recognize as our target integral i. So we have negative i here and i on the left-hand side as well. So this implies that we have 2i equal to 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of dx divided by phi minus the squared cosine of x and the twos cancel out pretty nicely. So we're now interested in the structure that is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of dx by phi minus cosine square x. Now, how exactly do we approach this? Well, notice first up that we're integrating a function of the squared cosine of x. So we can make use of the behavior of the squared cosine of x on the interval from 0 to 2 pi to change our limits of integration. Let me tell you exactly what I'm talking about. So here's my system of axes and the cosine function starts at one. So it goes like this all the way up to two pi. Now for the squared cosine, the positive and negative areas mean the same thing, right? They're equal. And let me just cut this graph at x equals pi and what we get are four equal areas that's right we have four equal areas one two three and four so that means instead of integrating from zero to two pi we could just integrate from zero to pi by two and multiply the result by four so this implies that I can write i as 4 pi times the integral now from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by phi minus the squared cosine of x. And this is a really nice structure to work with because the limits of integration are a lot more familiar. They're probably one of our favorite limits to work with, 0 to 2 pi. That's a really nice interval to work with. Now, how exactly do I approach the integral now? Well, the first thing I'd like to do is expand using the squared secant of x, and you'll see why in a moment. So if I just multiply upstairs and downstairs by the squared secant of x, uh, wait a second, uh, much better. We have phi times the squared secant of x minus 1, because cosine and secant are just multiplicative inverses. And I'd like to expand this secant term here because we know that this is 1 plus the squared tangent of x. So this implies that i equals 4 pi times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the squared secant of x dx divided by phi minus 1 
plus 5 times the squared tangent of x. And that would be a really good time to like and subscribe. And speaking of liking and subscribing, I recently started a new channel on which I'll be uploading formal math courses content, starting off with complex analysis. So link in the, descri in the description below. Do check that out. And I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, so what exactly am I going to do with this structure now? Okay, well, if I expand using the square root of phi, then notice here that what I have is just the inverse tangent structure. So we could just let phi root phi times the tangent of x, x that is equal u. And this implies that root phi times the squared secant of x dx equals du, which is exactly the structure we need for the differential element. And this implies that i can be written as 4 pi divided by root phi times the integral from, well, as x approaches 0, you will approach 0 as well. And as x approaches pi by 2, you get an upper limit of infinity. And we're left with du divided by phi minus 1 plus u squared. And phi minus 1, of course, can be written as root phi minus 1 squared. So you have a nice inverse tangent structure now. So you have 4 pi divided by root phi times root phi minus 1. And we're left with the inverse tangent of u divided by root phi minus 1 with the limits being 0 and infinity. So as you approach 0, we get the inverse tangent of 0, which is 0. And as you approach infinity, we approach pi by 2. So this means that we have 4 pi divided by square root phi squared minus phi times pi by 2. So we see some nice cancellation here. And in the denominator, we have this really nice phi squared minus phi term. Now, the golden ratio satisfies this equation. It's phi squared minus phi minus 1 equal to 0, which implies that phi squared minus phi equals 1, which is very, very convenient indeed, because it implies that our integral, that is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of x dx divided by phi squared, no, it was just phi minus the squared cosine of x, equals 2 pi squared. A lovely integration result connecting two very important constants. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.